Hey everybody, welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie and TV show review podcast. I'm your host, Simeon Jimmy Monkey Jehoshaphat, joined as always by subscribe to Game Squid on YouTube, everyone. Hey everybody, we're talking about Fargo today. Have you all seen all of the Fargo? Well, before we jump into Fargo, Florian, I would like to share with you a joke that I heard recently about Austrians that I, I did not understand it. So I'm, I want to say it to you and you can tell us if it makes sense with Austrian wow. culture. Let's hear it. Okay. An Austrian walks into a bar and the bartender says, what can I get for you? The Austrian says, oh, I, I would like to order a corn pizza. Bartender says, this is a bar. We don't serve corn pizza here. Austrian says, oh, I'm sorry. I must have walked into the wrong restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I often prank bars by, by ordering corn pizza. <laughs> is that, that's an Austrian custom is going to bars <laughs> and ordering corn pizza when they don't even have it? Yeah, that's specifically it. How did you know? I, I, I was watching a stand-up bit from the 80s with George Carlin, and that was one of his jokes. I, I thought you could uh, explain it to me. Damn, so what did he really order? <laughs> no, that that was the joke. That's what he said on stage. That's a, that's a classic George Carlin bit. I'm, I'm very doubtful of this. He does the seven words you can't say on television, and he does the Austrian corn pizza bit. Those are his two most famous jokes. Wow. Seven words, huh? Yeah. You can't say really uh, bitch, cock, sucker, motherfucker, something like I that. Know, I, I don't know. I regret this already. <laughs> You're not a big fan of George Carlin, but are you a big fan of Fargo Season 4 Rated R? Hell yeah. That was pretty good. I mean, I, I don't know specifically comparing it to the other seasons, but just the fact that Fargo is back is always so good, man. The, God, the, the movie was all right. I guess the first season was amazing. I don't remember much about the second and the third season, and, and four was pretty good. Yeah, Yeah. let's be clear to the audience. Uh, Fargo is an anthology series, so each season is its own independent story. You don't have to watch any of the other seasons. You can just jump in in any season and enjoy it. Uh, so if you haven't watched the first three seasons, but you get interested in season four after this podcast, you can just go watch season four. No problem. Well, you should still go and watch season one, actually. That one's the best one. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite, too. Um, only because everybody tells me I look like Martin Freeman. Or I think that's his name. What's the name of the, the main actor yeah, from, yeah, from The I Hobbit? Yeah. P I, people yeah. say I look like him, which I take as a compliment, because I usually get that I look like McLovin or Lupin the Third. <laughs> Are you sure you're not more looking like Billy Bob Thornton? You God, I throw, wish. Throw out that beard, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, my god. Good. If I look like Billy Bob Thornton, I think my depression would be cured. Well, I mean, sometimes he looks pretty shabby. I mean, in Shabby's way better than whatever I have going on. <laughs> you you fucking baby. Like you're so bad. Jeez. Yeah. And you, you you're saying Hartsy shouldn't do it, and then you every time you're just so so unhappy with your appearance. How Jesus. dare you evoke the name of Hartsy on my show? <laughs> Deplorable. So, season four of Fargo is the story of two rivaling gangs in 1950s Kansas City. You have the uh, Italian gang and you have the uh, African American, black, what, what have you gang. And they're kind of going to war for territory and power. And that's the, the main thrust of the, the 11 episode arc. Florian, uh, jump on in. What did you think? What are your ups and downs, your lefts and rights, your backwards and forwards on this season? Yeah, how did you enjoy the fact that the show is really pointing out that there was in fact racism against Italians? They weren't considered white. Are you are you happy about that political message? Uh, I still you? hate WAPs to this day. So yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm glad that they're identifying who is and is not white. <laughs> What about Jews and Irish? Hmm. I mean, if you're not me, then you're probably not white. Yes, Mumpke Jones, the whitest man in the world. I mean, if white or people Mumpke. are going to be so exclusionary that like Irish people don't count as white, then I mean, at this point, I might as well be the only white man left. And if you're not me, then you're not white. Damn. Yeah, so who was white then? Was it just like people that came from Britain? Is that where they came from? Uh, if I can use that as an excuse to say all British people are racist, then yes. 
<laughs> wow, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, anyways, I guess we, we, it sounds like this would be some kind of social justice show, but no, it was fairly good in in any in any enjoyable way, even if you're not on board with that agenda. Well, I mean, that's <laughs> not even an agenda. If you go watch uh, the Gangs of New York movie with Leo DiCaprio, that's what that's about, too. It was a real big deal that these people, you know, uh, immigrating or emigrating. I think it's immigrating when you're coming into a country. Uh, not leaving, but a lot of people immigrating, uh, even white people, faced a lot of discrimination and they were treated as if they weren't white. I don't think that's an SJW agenda. I think most people can easily agree with that piece of history. No, they all had white privilege. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I did not not remember that being such a big point in Gangs of New York. I guess I didn't pay enough attention. Well, that's why all these like Irish people and stuff had to join gangs and, and the black market and commit crimes because nobody wanted to hire Irish people. All You'd go to a store and there'd be a sign that says no blacks, no Irish. Damn, I thought they were just low IQ and that's why they had to train <laughs> gangs. <laughs> Those Irish, yeah. Hey, you, oh, well. you live closer to Ireland than me, dude. You can say you can talk all the shit you want. They're going to the uh, the IRA is <laughs> going to come for you, not me. Yeah, they're going to be real offended. Watch out. <laughs> That's what their uh, their terrorist group is called. The IRA, right? I don't even remember. Irish I Resistance think, yeah. Association or some shit. Was it Re Revolutionary Army? Hmm. Might be. Yeah, I don't know. I did a, a video. All right. I did a Kino episode about the Jackie Chan movie. Um, that had to do with Irish people or something, and I got a lot of stuff wrong, and everybody roasted me, so I shouldn't even try to talk about Irish history. I have no fucking clue. Well, I don't even know if they were legitimate or not, if they if they were, like, actual guerrilla freedom fighters, or if they were just bloodthirsty terrorists. I guess you never know. I would assume terrorists, but, you know, anybody who's using violence for political gains is a terrorist, I think. Anybody, you say? Hmm. Who, they, they who were... has the right to use violence for political gains, Florian? Please fill me in, you Austrian uh, succubus. Let us yeah, all you know. Ever, you ever hear of the American independence war? You are a country of terrorists. <laughs> That's what you are. How dare you rebel against the, the, the British crown? You guys are really the worst. They started you know, it, man. We were peacefully protesting in that Boston Harbor, dumping the tea in, and they started shooting. It was the shot heard around the world, okay? They shot first, and we, uh, you know, we're the real Han Solo here. Hey, come on, man. You can't dump the tea of the British. How could you? Of course they're going to have to shoot you. You bring, you bring down on yourself. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Let's talk about the season. What did you think? Uh, Chris Rock stars as the head of the Black Mafia, and the the Italian Mafia, there's a, a fight for power because the – as often happens in the show i think the same exact thing happened in season two where episode one starts off with the the head of this mob family dies in some sort of accident and then there's a power vacuum and uh, some of his sons are competing to see who will take over the family business so those are the the two factions we have the two main warring factions yeah that's definitely uh, an interesting premise God, oh, shit, I completely lost my train of thought. Then what were we saying? What's well, the question again? So we have the, in the, the Italian group, there's the two main uh, brothers who are fighting for power reminded me a lot of uh, Mumkey and Biggs. You've got, oh, yeah. you've got the little guy, the little guy who thinks he's in charge. And then you've got his brother who is fucking a, a ginormous monster <laughs> muscle house of a man who, uh, who might actually be in charge the whole time. Who can say? Yeah, Bix is definitely ruling you from the shadows. That is yeah. correct. Yeah, but but of course they learn that uh, if they're divided, they will fall, and that really working together in a, a real freak the mighty sort of way, where, with the little guy as the brains and the big guy as the brawn, that's the that's the solution to win the day. And all you have to do is not trip over a rock and shoot yourself in the head, and you'll probably survive. 
Yeah, you'd, you'd think that's like the opposite of the moral. As soon as they were getting along, he, he just <laughs> dies in a freak accident. <laughs> they had yeah, at least two time. episodes of uh, thriving and surviving. It was uh, it was just a, a terrible <laughs> fate that that fell before him. No, that was that was really tragic. There were actually a lot of characters that I was kind of rooting for, and then they all died. Amazing. I guess that's what you get in Fargo. Never time for sequels. We always get to dig up a whole new anthology. I mean, is that what, what you call it? Anthology, no, yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah, speaking so, of a lot of characters, though, I think this is one of the main issues with the last three seasons of Fargo. I don't think it's a coincidence that we both agree season one is the best, and that's because season one is very, very heavily focused on two main characters. You've got Martin Freeman's character, who's like the, the Walter White of that season, and then you have Billy Bob Thornton, and these are two very uh, deep, complex, interesting characters, and we get to see their journeys over the course of the season. But then, in every subsequent season, he's really, uh, Noah Hawley, who produces and writes the show, he's really been trying to flex his uh, muscles, his, his creativity muscles and his storytelling muscles in ways that aren't always the best for giving us characters that we really, truly understand and um, it, it, like we did in season one. And it seems like he's adding in a little bit too much. The seasons often feel a bit overstuffed with too many characters, too many plot threads going on, and it feels less focused than season one. Would you agree with that, or would you say this was pretty straightforward? Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Uh, I guess the, the thing is that he could have done it with this many characters. It would have been good if he had made a longer season, I guess. How long is it? 11 episodes? Yeah, usually I think Fargo is... 10 episodes and this one ended up being 11. I might be wrong though. Or am I wrong? Is it, is it only seven? God, I need to look this no, up. No, this season was 11 episodes for sure. It I was? just watched it the okay, other day. Good. Well, I guess it felt shorter than I saw. What else did I watch that was seven episodes? Never mind. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I, guess it, I guess it was just too many characters. I feel like they should have been explored more. Oh, well. But then again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how long he can go with people just dying randomly. Is that never going to get boring? It's like, oh, this guy's having a really great moment. Oh, the hurricane blows him away. <laughs> like, oh, what the I, hell? I, Come I, on. I will, no restraint. I think I will convince you by the end of this podcast that, and spoilers, obviously, but it's Fargo. You know all the bad guys are going to fucking die. But uh, I, I think I can convince you that the tornado scene was actually pure Kino and uh, was heavily foreshadowed from the very beginning of the show. And when it happened, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. But before we What's get into that. One season four? Season four. Oh, okay. Well, damn. No, what I, what I, I like about Fargo is that it's it's the it's like a modern day folk stories taking place in the Midwest about true crime, but uh, of course these aren't actual true stories. I like that they always start off each episode saying this is a true story, and uh, for out of respect for the dead, we're gonna tell it exactly as it happened. But then, like in season two, fucking aliens show up, and this season a fucking tornado shows up and just sucks the bad guy straight out of the out of the gunfight. Uh, so obviously it's all fucking bullshit. But I like these as Midwestern crime folk stories where. Where at the end of the day, whether uh, no matter which side you started on, if you are a bad guy who did bad things to innocent people, you almost always get your comeuppance by the end of either the Fargo movie or the end of the season. And even people who had an arc where they're redeemed and they become maybe a good guy at the end, if they killed innocent people, they usually end up dead. Wow, I, I don't know, man. To me, it just feels like like that movie, Final Destination, where just everyone needs to die. Uh oh, yeah. Except for I guess the boring characters that didn't kill anyone. Please. So let, let, let me let me red pill you on the tornado. In episode three, there's a scene where Chris Rock is talking to his um, business partner. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Senator, which I thought was uh, pretty great. Uh, him and Dr. Senator are – they're trying to go legit instead of doing all the, the underground business of um, you know gambling and selling firearms and stuff. They invented a new thing called the credit card where you can uh, – I don't know how it works. I guess you can – Pay for something with a credit card and then pay it off later. Credit card works. 
<laughs> did, did it blow your mind that Noah Hawley had the audacity to say black people invented the credit card? Isn't that true? I think I heard that somewhere. You think Chris Rock invented the credit card? Yes. Okay. Uh, for all I know, it is true, and then white people stole it because that's what happens in the show. But there's a yeah. scene where Dr. Senator says to uh, Chris Rock, you know, man tries his best to control things, but, uh, you know, God is like a tornado and will destroy man's plans. He says something like that. I'm, I'm fucking up the line because I didn't write it down. Yeah, I, I remember that line. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, and then the guy who's trying to control his, everything in life gets fucking sucked up by a random tornado. I think it's Kino. Yeah, you better not try to to save a little kid from a life of crime, or else there'll be a tornado for you. Well, you he try not to go legit and invent the credit card <laughs> tornado, baby. Hey, hey, black people didn't get killed by the tornado. It was only the white people. Well, I mean, I think the the tornado represents the entire show. Yeah, that's and fair. All, all the crazy stuff that happened. Yeah, and the symbolism became so intense that it manifested as an actual tornado. Yeah, and then the screen was black and white for a whole episode. That was cool. Oh, that was a great episode, too. I, I didn't see the point of it being black and white. How is it any different than any other episode? So, okay, um, I guess it, we're just... It, just... it just stopped halfway through, and I, I don't know what, where's, what, 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 what changed that made it now not be black and okay. white anymore. Okay, let me explain it to you then. And I, I guess we're just going to jump around randomly, so this review will make a lot more sense if you've actually watched the show. <laughs> but uh, I, guess, I guess if I haven't ever watched the TV show, I probably wouldn't randomly listen to a season four review of it. So I guess this is for the real Fargo heads out there. But that episode is called uh, East West and it follows, I don't remember any of the characters' names, but the idea is that these two gangs, the, uh, they decide, hey, to keep the peace, we will trade sons. Uh, my, my little black son will go join the uh, Italian mafia and their little Italian son will come join the black mafia. And that way we have constant, the, the constant ability to just fuck each other over. Oh, you're going to fuck with me? Okay, I'll kill your son. So it, it's a, it's a, what did you think of that whole setup? Did you think that was, is that something that actually happened in history or was that just fucking crazy? Because I, I was thinking, why would you ever agree to this? <laughs> yeah. That that must just be crazy. There's no way, no way that would happen. I mean, come on, you, people are, are really invested in raising their children, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a big deal. But I guess, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, mutually assured destruction. That's pretty much what they have going on in this setup. I mean, it's, it, not even because they have like several kids. Yeah, so <laughs> you're not even gonna lose much. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, just one whole dead kid. Who cares? I mean, you're going to go to war with the Mafia family anyways, I guess. Yeah. So, in the Italian mob, there uh, several years ago, like 30 years ago, they also did this trade with the Irish mob. And the, the kid who got traded from the Irish mob to the Italian mob is still part of the uh, Italian mob. And he betrayed his own family and shot his own father in the head. And now he's like a 40 year old man, all grown up. It's the same actor who plays Q in the James Bond movies and is also the voice of uh, Paddington Bear from the Paddington movies, which I find just delightful. Well, the, the rabbi is, is that character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name's Rabbi. I forgot about that. Yeah, he's Paddington Pear. Holy yeah, shit, yeah, he plays crazy. Paddington. But so oh, wow. naturally, when the black kid is traded over to the mafia, the I or the it the I I keep getting Irish and Italian mixed up, but I, I think I'm gonna I, I think I'm getting it right for the most part. The the guy who was traded when he was a kid has a special place in his heart for the little black kid because he was in the same scenario and he's he takes him under his wing and he's taking care of him. And they decide, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm running away. I'm taking the kid with me. We're going to start our own life somewhere else and get away from all this mobster shit. And that brings us to the black and white episode where they're being pursued by their people and he's trying to get away. They decide to stop at a little hotel in the middle of nowhere and the hotel's all weird. The episode's in black and white. They go by a billboard that it has not been completed yet. And the billboard says, the future is, and then the final word has not been finished on the billboard. So the guy is like, the future is what? And the guy who's finishing the billboard says, uh, what? You, you got to uh, wait and find out. You know, stick around and see how it ends. And I thought, oh, that's very meta. Uh, I hope uh, 
I hope we see that the future is something worth waiting for in this show. But then the it, it's the little black boy's birthday and the the Irish caretaker wants to get him a present. So he goes out, runs into the people who are following them. They get into a gunfight. But uh oh, tornado comes, sucks them all away. They're all dead. It's still completely in black and white at this point. We then see the little black boy, and is it is it offensive to say little black boy? Should I call him something else? I feel weird saying that. No, I think it's actually coming around again. Uh, or, uh, at some point, we were supposed to say people of color, but then I heard other people say that saying people of color erases the blackness of, of the person. So it, it's okay. coming back around. I think you can say it again. Okay, well, and he's literally like nine years old, so I'm not I'm not calling a, a black man boy. I think that's one of the that's one of the <laughs> things they don't like. Problem. Yeah, they don't yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> I mean, what other fucking oh, no. pronoun would you use? <laughs> Z Z don't like that. No, <laughs> but when the when the black boy realizes that his caretaker is not coming back and he is now he's independent, he's on his own. He has to uh, stop hiding in this little hotel room and just he has to take his life into his own hands. And as soon as he opens the door towards his new life of pure independence, that's when it goes back into color. So I think that's what the the symbolism of the color change was. Yeah, but how does that make sense? Consider how does it begin in the first place? Because he never had independence, so the whole the whole show would have been in black and white. Well, I mean, you can't do the whole fucking show in black and white. It's just symbolism for the one episode because this is the episode that focuses entirely on these two characters. We don't even see Chris Rock or the other mobsters at all. It's like this is just the one episode for them. I mean, it still made the whole thing less attractive to watch, even if the symbolism was spot on. So I, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, I was it the movie Clerks that was in black and white. Um, I I had to turn it off after yeah, five minutes because so. I don't want to watch people talk to each other in black and white for two hours. So yeah, I, I, I mean, agree. I'm I mean, not a huge fan. I mean, it, it can be used to really good effect, like Schindler's List and that one Billy Bob Thornton movie, The Man That Wasn't There. I I like those. But then, like, this this feels so arbitrary. Just, like, half of this episode, I, I don't know. Seems very weird. Well, and to be it, fair, it's not even like, it was in 1950. Like or anything. Yeah. Back, back in the 1950s, everything was in black and white. A t a color yeah. wasn't invented until Technocolor in the 1960s. And then the whole world changed. Yeah, but I mean, if if the point is that it's old, then you, then use it in a backflash. But then I was like, is this a backflash? Is that's why it's black and white? No, those are the characters that we're at. I I don't know. It was just a mess to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fair. You don't just because somebody does something artistic that makes sense doesn't mean everybody has to like it. I'm sure there's a million <laughs> artistic decisions that I disagree with. Yeah, but. Like, I was yeah. playing this game Binding of Isaac, and I was like, okay, whoever did the art for this game, fucking retard, the game mechanics are stupid. Whoa. Like, you would have to make at least 15 YouTube videos explaining the mechanics of this game for them to make sense. <laughs> hey, my my video series is on, on explaining how you could make a game like Binding of Isaac. You should, you should watch it. It's great. Who says I you haven't watched watch it? How dare you? Oh, wow. Assuming my gender, assuming what I've watched. You said you hadn't watched it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you want to talk about from this season? If you have more questions that I need to spell out for you at a fifth grade comprehension level, please let me know and I'll let you know what the tornado and what the black and white meant. I actually... Wait, is black and white a, a, a racism metaphor? I guess there was racism in that episode. Was that it? You were wrong. It was oh, racist. No. Oh, and as soon as he opens the door, there's no more racism. It's all he's free now. He's an equal well, man. He, I guess he is kind of free. I don't know. He's free <laughs> from that town full of racists. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you never know. I, I mean, I think right. in the 1950s, there's probably not a single town in America that has no racist people. So I don't know if he's safe anywhere. Oh, damn. Well, he's probably safe on the road where he's currently going to be. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyways, I actually watched, like, a bunch of Ending Explained stuff, and so I actually know most of the other stuff now, I think. <laughs> so, well, well I guess fill me in. What did you learn? I want to I wanna hear about this stuff. Maybe I can uh, see if I disagree with their interpretation. I mean, considering I, I was pretty out of the loop, I didn't realize that the, the black kid was going to be 
that one black character from the other season. Uh, Mike Mulligan, I think his name was. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, from season two. Yeah, who would have guessed? He doesn't look anything like it. Just like that Indian guy who's supposed to be another guy, but he looks way nothing like him as well. He got plastic surgery, I guess. Wow. Yeah, that's something... um, I don't know if it's interesting or uh, misplayed in this show, but every so often they will try to connect the seasons by saying, oh, this character from this season is actually the father of this one from this season, or this is the same character grown up. And sometimes it's so much of a stretch that it kind of ruins the immersion of the show, and other times it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, I guess this one's definitely cool because he didn't need plastic surgery and he read that book on how to talk to people so that explains why his personality... Yeah, how to how to make friends and win people over. I did not realize that book was so old because people still read that today and I'm thinking, well, if, if some little kid's reading it in the 1950s, those tips have got to be at least a little outdated, right? Or I mean, is it still <laughs> relevant to this day? I didn't even know that book existed. Did he meet the guy who wrote the book or or was he just really enthusiastic about that? No, he didn't meet the author. It's just that is a book that like still to this day, it's like that book and the secret people treat them like religions and they'll go out of their way to read the whole thing uh, cover to cover and try to live their life by the teachings. Now, I've never read either one. Maybe they're good books full of good advice. I don't know. Wow, that sounds great. I guess I should read that other one. What, what's the secret about? Do you know? I think it's uh, manifesting what you want by pretending that it's real. I Something like that. It's like a vis- know, vision board bullshit. Day. It's it's hippy-dippy garbage. Yeah, that does sound pretty stupid. Yeah, it's very stupid. Oh, well. Guess I should read that that book about making friends, even though I'm pretty antisocial. You should read that. You could do a, a review, and you could teach our uh, autistic <laughs> listeners how to win friends and influence people, according oh, to some guy in, I assume, the 1940s. Well, I, I guess people haven't changed that much, have they? Hmm. I think the lines of communication have changed, though. Like if the book says, hey, pull up on your horse and carriage buggy and, and go <laughs> ask a lady to go to the dance. It's like, yeah, I don't think that works as much in the age of the Internet. I don't know, man. Women really like horses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you should do. <laughs> I don't know if you want to date a horse girl. That's I mean, that's about as bad as girls can get. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> some t- some terrible stereotypes. I see. <laughs> <laughs> every a- every high school has at least one. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> now, what is the problem with horse women? I don't get it. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't think I want to know. Let's. Uh, <laughs> what, what are some other things from the season you want to talk about? Well, I guess I, I should say most of the characters are, are pretty good. I, so, what was your favorite one? The character I liked the most was there is a a forty year old nurse who with red hair, very cute little actress. Uh, she was recently in the Netflix movie. I'm thinking of ending things, or I think that's what the name is. Oh so, damn! I need to watch that then. Yeah, I, I like this lady. She is a, a sociopath nurse who loves to put their like if her patients are in great pain, she likes to end their pain by murdering them and stealing their belongings. And there are just a lot of scenes of her poisoning people. But and you think, oh, she must be like th- this crazy evil bitch. But it's her attitude is so funny. Such a great juxtaposition of deep, deep uh evil inside this little woman who is so bright and cheery and she's always trying to be friendly to people and oh oh you like this kind of cookie i'll make you those cookies oh uh what a fun character i don't remember her name but i don't remember any of the characters names at this point yeah neither neither do i yeah she was definitely one of the good ones yeah one of the good characters Uh oh (laughs) and i i also liked the the in the first episode, she's introduced as the main character, this uh, black high school student oh, yeah. who uh, she's like narrating the first episode of the show. I really like her journey through this show and how she gets involved with the the lady who's killing and poisoning people and tries to use that as leverage to uh, stop the 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 black mafia and the white mafia from fucking with 
her dad's uh, funeral business. So uh, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of the thing is it's an embarrassment of riches, an abund uh, abundance of riches, you could say. There's yeah. so many good characters that they don't get enough time to truly shine. There there's so many, so many fucking named characters that have their own arc in this uh, season. I thought that black schoolgirl was kind of too smart. I don't know. It seemed seemed crazy. Oh, like, oh, oh yeah. Black girls can't be as smart as us whiteies, huh? Florian Himsel. <laughs> I, I don't know. That that whole plot of, of getting the, the two mafias to stop fighting, that's pretty crazy. How how to come up with that one all by herself. I think uh, it, right? they, they did their homework and showed us the steps of her logically coming to the conclusion by you know, doing the research and, and all that. Because she had information nobody else had. She's the only person who knew that this nurse was killing her patients and, and stealing their belongings. So she she's the only one who could have drawn that, uh, you know, come to that conclusion. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. I, I don't know. It's just the way that she talks is is very strange. In a way that she she just seems to know too much. And I don't know, it's it's like she's a, a character from like our time, and she goes back and she she sees all the all the things that are wrong with this world, and then she 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 points them out in a way that <laughs> understandable. She's like an she's a Seth MacFarlane's character in A Million Ways to Die in the West. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's fine. I'll take it. You agree? Damn. I mean, I don't think she's too smart. I just think she's you know the valid Victorian of her class. She's a very studious, intelligent young woman in the 1950s, back when they they didn't have fucking iPhones and iPads that you could play games on all day. She just like if she wants to do something for fun, she has to open a book. So it does not blow my mind that she would be so intelligent. I, I find that pretty hard to believe that people back in those days would be that smart just from reading books. You, you don't know how much information we absorb just by being on the internet, okay? I, th I think it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy to think that they got this kind of modern intelligence, but I guess maybe I'm giving us too much credit. Who knows? Well, and, and to be fair, this is one of the main characters in a Noah Hawley TV show. So they're going to be, you know, interesting, deep, complex, intelligent, all these things. Uh, if, if the character was lame, I don't know if I'd want to watch them. Well, okay. I guess that's pretty cool. I guess. So my, my favorite characters, I guess, are like uh, the, the detective. He's called Dick something. You, you know, you know his character. Uh, I mean, his actor. I think his actor is called Timothy Oliphant, which is oh, that was great. Timothy Oliphant, the guy who had the the nervous tick, and he's always what yeah. what is that called when you have to like? Wait, no, no, the nervous tick is the other one. Oh, you like the Mormon detective? Yeah. That's uh, oh, yeah, that was Timothy Oliphant. That's right. I was I was very confused when when I thought it was the other guy. <laughs> Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> who, who would like that guy? <laughs> oh, I love that guy too. What is that condition <laughs> called? Is it OCD when you have to like knock on a door five times before yes. you open it? Uh, I thought that yeah, guy had one of the best story arcs of the whole season too. I mean, I guess, but it's just like it's just like so far ago that, that he would be like the one who who shits himself in fear, <laughs> and then he's the only one who survives in the end. Okay, great. He doesn't survive. Right, so he he gets killed too. Well, yeah, well, at least he survives that shootout as the only person, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only. Yeah, so, the only what did you like about side of the law? What did you like about the the Mormon missionary? Um, uh, he wasn't uh just a cop or a detective. He was like a, like a federal agent. What was what do they call that? Oh God. He had like marshal? a yeah yeah. He was a marshal. That's right. What did you like about that character? Well, I, I guess he plays that character in, in anything he's in, so I guess I just like the actor very much. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, he just goes and then he, he he robs people the wrong way and then he gets information in weird ways. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And he's he's always pulling out, uh, he has like a, a bag full of carrots in his pocket, like he's fucking Bugs Bunny and he keeps <laughs> pulling them out yeah. and chewing on them while interviewing people. I, I can't even imagine anyone actually liking carrots, so I guess he no. must be... Some pretty good guy. You, I, you like carrots? Fuck no. Cold carrots? Um, I, so I, gross. I'm not about that. If they're like steamed and they're all soft and squishy, I'll I'll eat those all day. That's no problem. 
Yeah, man, cold carrots are really gross. Yeah, fuck that. Way too crunchy. You're going to break. I'm going to chip a tooth eating some disgusting shit. Fuck that. I'd rather <laughs> break my teeth eating milk duds. <laughs> Whoa. I guess that'll work. Yeah, it feels like eating wood almost. It's crazy. Yeah, no good. No, nope. I guess my my second favorite character, or or yeah, second, is Chris Rock. I guess. Wait, what's his name? Roy Cannon? No, Loy. Loy Cannon. I, I guess people say he he's not perfectly typecast, but I think he he did a great job. I think the the moments where where he's actually funny are are pretty good, and he doesn't overdo it. It's great, and I. I guess I just like him uh, seeing him come up with plans and and him trying to execute them anyways. <laughs> yeah, I would say there are no bad performances or no bad castings in the whole show. I think Noah Hawley is or whoever is behind the casting really nails it every season and every every actor really brings their all. Like they know that Fargo is a good show and they're not going to phone it in. They really bring everything they have to these characters and Chris Rock uh, I, I haven't seen him do very many serious, dramatic performances bef before, and this is a real uh, change in tone for me, and I thought he was great. Yeah, for sure. Too bad that none of them shall live. What a shame. <laughs> they're all really, they're going in the, the Brian Cranston route of, oh, he's a famous comedy actor. Let's see if he can do drama. Oh, it turns out comedy actors are just as good at drama because comedy is much fucking harder to do than drama. Wow, you think? Oh, that's oh, pretty cool, I guess. 100%. I think Brian yeah. Cranston has even said as much. Like, yeah, like, drama, anybody can do that shit. Comedy, it takes real talent to do comedy right. Yeah, I guess so. I'm pretty hard to please when it comes to comedy. I mean, I, I guess the timing has to be pretty good. Or maybe yeah. I just like poop jokes, I guess. That's, <laughs> that, that, that might be one other thing. <laughs> Hold the phone, wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I know. I think I, I I mixed up the line. I think it was the other way around. It, it was. I'm such a I'm a hashtag fake fan. Uh oh. Then my animator animated an actual phone flying into my hand. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you never know with, with that one. <laughs> Let's talk about the detective with the nervous twi uh, tick who has OCD because he's a. Uh, he he's like a war veteran and he said you know what i i have ocd and i had to go into the minefields and and find the mines so i'm always super nervous i need to take control of my own life so i'll become a cop and then i'll also work undercover for the mafia so i'll have complete control the mafia won't be coming after me the police won't be coming after me i'll be safe and sound but uh oh <laughs> That's not how it turns out. He gets mixed in with both mafias and they're both blackmailing him, him and threatening him. And he goes from a place of comfort where he's in power to now he's fucked. No matter what he does, he's fucked. If he chooses to align with one side, he's fucked on the other side. So when we, when we have a character who his his ultimate motivation is having control and being safe and you put him in a situation where he has absolutely no control uh i was i was thrilled watching him go through this and and try to use his his uh psychosis and ocd and all these things to get out of the situation and uh, ultimately he does get the upper hand and he becomes like he, he makes the kingmaker move he he gets rid of all the witnesses and he's finally in a place where he's safe but then he gets shot and killed anyway by the character who I compared to Biggs. Tragic. <laughs> oh, was was that him? Damn, what a shame. Yeah, I guess I remember that now. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I really like the part where he decides, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on the side of the law for now. And then that one actually worked out, I guess. But was it sincere? I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, I don't think anything he does is actually sincere. I think he's always just looking out for one himself and two his collection of uh, dolls or uh, oh, like God. he's like the Alpine Shepherd Boy from Better Call Saul. He he has a collection of these weird little fucking knickknack things that are that I don't <laughs> like. I, I, is that I, how old those are? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess so. I don't know, um, <laughs> but it, I, I think the the main uh, th uh, through line of our review here is. 
If you people like interesting, quirky characters, Fargo is 100% the show for you because they're going to give you a metric shit ton of great, interesting, complex characters. The only issue is that sometimes they give us way too many and we feel overwhelmed. Yeah, I guess so. They could have done the whole second season on those characters. Would have been pretty good. Oh, well. So I guess is the Kino? Yes, it is. <laughs> we did it. Oh hell yeah, dude! I mean, we we still have a little bit of time if you want to bring up anything else. But yeah, I would say all four seasons have consistently been Kino, with season one being my S rank tier. Have you reviewed that one on on the show yet? No, I think Erich and I did season three, maybe, but I I don't fucking remember. We should rewatch season one and review it. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. I mean, it Hell seems yeah. like a, a lot of uh, TV watching and effort for something that's going to get 500 views. But sure, I guess I can binge that fucking shit. Well, I need to watch it again. Okay, I'm, I need more Fargo. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So is there going to be another season? I never know, I guess. Uh, Noah Hawley, he, unlike other TV shows with a new season every year, Noah Hawley waits until he has a really good idea and then goes into production. So we usually have to wait maybe two, three, four years for each new Fargo season. And actually, it was just announced on the, the Disney Investor Day. I don't know. Did you pay attention to that when Disney announced all their new movies and TV shows? Wait, this is Disney? No, 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 but it, okay. it ties in. Disney announced uh, now that they own Fox, they're going to create a TV show about the movie Alien, and Noah Hawley is set to um, produce it and be the head writer on it. So he might be busy doing Alien for a while, and we probably won't get Fargo again anytime soon. Ah, that's too bad. I don't even like Alien. Yeah, um, I've never seen it, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's good. I just haven't seen it. I mean, I guess like people like the first one and then they're not into the other ones, but the first one is to me not particularly interesting. So I guess I've heard that Alien and Aliens are both good. And then uh, Ridley Scott kind of gets up his own ass with like Prometheus and all these other movies. But I, I really can't speak on him because I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, I, I remember watching him, but I, I guess no one will agree with my opinions. I guess I'm not big on horror movies anyways. Yeah. Well, is that all we have for today? Should we wrap up this Kino and, and ask people, hey, would you like to go check out Game Squid on YouTube, everyone? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a plan. What do you have coming up on your channel next? Oh, damn. Well, I guess I got to do that. My I have another piece to do on that Half-Life call-up. I don't know. Did you see the... I did. The I, I've also never played Half-Life, so I did not understand your animation at all, but I watched <laughs> it. You probably didn't get the, the part where where it's about Cuphead and, and that one guy who, who sucked at playing the tutorial. Yeah, yeah. I, I understood that part for sure. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's just crazy. Nobody knows there's an actual tutorial in Half-Life on a... What a what a rare find! <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing a sec one on that, and I guess just some more rants I gotta gotta do. <laughs> well, hey, there you go. Go subscribe to Game Squid on YouTube, everybody, and uh, that's all I've got for you. For is it Kino? I've been uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a character name, but I can't think of any. I've been Lorietta Mayflower, baby. Oh, and I was Lloyd Cannon, I guess. Haha. <laughs> Oh, wow. Really? You're going to do digital blackface on my show, Florian? Typical oh, Austrian. Shit. I didn't think of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time, folks. <laughs> Goodbye.